It was one of the deadliest coronavirus outbreaks at any nursing home in the country, killing 76 veterans, that's roughly 30% of all residents, at the Soldiers Home in Holyoke last spring. And today we're still learning how it was allowed to happen. Last March, the home superintendent, Bennett Walsh, was quickly put on leave and Governor Charlie Baker brought in an independent attorney, Mark Perlstein, to investigate. In June, Pearlstein released a report of his findings detailing numerous decisions from Walsh that were, quote, utterly baffling from an infection control perspective, including the consolidation of two dementia units that included some COVID-positive residents, little to no distancing between symptomatic and asymptomatic units, a failure to quickly isolate suspected COVID patients, delays in testing, and continued rotation of healthcare staff throughout the home. The report sought to explain how Walsh, a former military lieutenant colonel, ended up at the state-run facility in the first place, citing, quote, political connections who downplayed his lack of, quote, any experience whatsoever in managing a health care facility. And Perlstein also placed blame on the state's Department of Veterans Services, which he said failed to effectively oversee the home. Around that time, Walsh and the state Secretary of Veterans Services, Francisco Urena, were both forced out by the Baker administration. And in September, Attorney General Maura Healy, whose office conducted its own investigation, filed criminal charges against Walsh and Dr. David Clinton, the home's former medical director, who stepped down amid the outbreak in May. As for the man at the top, Governor Charlie Baker told me on Boston Public Radio last May that he and other senior administration officials didn't learn about the conditions at the home until Holyoke Mayor Alex Morse told them, and then it was too late. The first I heard about it, obviously, was that phone call on Sunday night in um, uh, late March when the lieutenant governor... Secretary Sutters and I were all on the phone together, and Alex Morris reached out to the lieutenant governor. The lieutenant governor, the secretary, and I were shocked um, by that call. The independent investigator, Mark Perlstein, directed virtually none of the blame at the doorsteps of Baker and Sutters. And when we invited him on the show, he said he could only join us with the governor's permission, which we never received. Maybe now we know why. A new investigation from the Boston Globe Spotlight team tells a very different story than that of Governor Baker, Secretary Sutters, and Investigator Perlstein. It's called Failure of Command, and two of the journalists behind this terrific piece join me now, Globe reporter Rebecca Ostriker and Spotlight editor Patricia Wynn. Patricia, Rebecca, thanks so much for being here. Happy to be here. You know, my three major takeaways from this are one, Baker's involvement in the hiring of an unqualified Bennett Walsh. Uh, Health Secretary Mayor Lou Sutter's shifting blame to those beneath her. And what you call uh, the omissions and false assertions in the report by the investigator picked by Baker. So if I can go down the list with your permission. Re Rebecca, starting with you, Governor Baker said the first time he ever met Walsh was when he swore him in. Was that true? No, that was not true. Um, Governor Baker interviewed Bennett Walsh uh, for 20 to 30 minutes on April 27th of 2016. Um, that is according to William Bennett, uh, Bennett Walsh's attorney and uncle. Um, but we got confirmation for that from a, um, an administration spokesperson afterwards. So that is simply not true. He interviewed him and that was part of the hiring process. And Patty, why did Pearlstein not uncover this in his report, what was his explanation as to why he didn't look into the issue of whether Governor Baker had had prior contact with Walsh? Well, um, one of the other uh, reporters uh, on the team, Andrew Estes, was the one who interviewed him. Mm -hmm. And when asked about it, he seemed to portray his focus as being more limited, even though, as you've heard, uh, Governor Baker has said that he gave Mark Perlstein wide latitude to look at anything he wanted to. I mean, the whole purpose of this was for it to be an authoritative report that would prevent future tragedies from happening. Um, it just, it does seem to us as if he was just sort of incurious about sort of what happened prior to the moment that COVID entered the uh, soldier's home. And so he has only just described it as he stayed within certain contours. Although I don't know why, because it seems to me if you were to try to get to the bottom of why this happened, you'd have to look at the hiring. You know, uh, uh, Rebecca, speaking of incurious, someone who seemed to be very curious was Secretary Sutters. Yet she seems, based on your reporting, to downplay her own level of involvement 
and knowledge and, and seems to try to pass the buck, for lack of a better expression, to officials beneath her, including the Secretary of uh, Veterans Affairs. Her involvement, though, was quite intimate in almost all of this, was it not? That's correct. Um, it, it became clear to us in our reporting that Secretary Sutters was directly involved in overseeing Bennett Walsh when he was superintendent. Uh, for example, she received a report of his anger problems. He um, he had a he had a temper, and she brought him into her office along with her veterans secretary and told him that he was going to be going to anger management uh, training. And this was extensive. It went on for many months and then was extended when there was another complaint. This is according to the veterans secretary. And what's peculiar is that in his report, um, Mark Perlstein stated that that whole decision was made by the veterans secretary and the health secretary, Mary Lou Sutters, allowed that to stand. She has not corrected the record, even though she's the one who sent him and was directly in contact with Bennett Walsh for for quite a long time, handling what was clearly a dysfunctional um, management situation at the home. You know, Patty, I want to, uh, I stated as a fact before something that I'd like your corroboration on. Perlstein, in his report, I was correct when I said that he did visit virtually none of the blame for what happened here on the doorsteps of the governor or the secretary of health and human services, Mary Lou Sutters. That is an accurate uh, a description of Perlstein's report and your reporting, correct, on that report? Yes, I mean, I read through the report a couple times. Um, I mean, the others on the team have. I, I do see that as an accurate assertion. Um, he, according to the footnotes, he did interview Governor Baker. He interviewed Mary Lou Sutters twice. Um, and uh, somehow, as you say, the blame falls primarily on the veteran secretary, Urena, and downward. Patty, I want to stay with you for a second about uh, people that Pearlstein chose not to interview, which was just impossible to believe for me. You detail that on a particularly perilous day, you and your colleagues detail, on a particularly perilous day, which I think was March 27th, Walsh realized he was drowning out there. He sends an email to the Secretary of Veterans Affairs saying, I think I need National Guards people to help out here. According to your reporting, six minutes later, six minutes later, Urena sends an email to two top aides to Mary Lou Sutters asking for uh, help, guidance, etc. They seem to have a complete lack of urgency in terms of their response, yet Perlstein chose not to interview either of the Sutter's assistants. Why? Did he explain why he chose to stop the discussion with uh, the Secretary of Veterans Affairs and not the people who he reached out to for help? You know, I, I don't know why. Uh, these questions were definitely presented to him. Um, I don't know why. Again, is it incurious? Is there, what is the reason for it? Um, of course, we know he's a highly regarded attorney, um, and I don't know why. Uh, he, these are just simply facts. And I think that what's left is the impression that Francisco Urena, as you just mentioned, the veteran secretary, it's as if he may have dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. It sort of ends there. And so the Perception is left that way when, you know, when it was actually far different. Rebecca, didn't, speaking of uh, uh, leaving the impression that, uh, uh, that Urena was the one who repeatedly dropped the ball, didn't you report that in legislative testimony or something from Perlstein outside the bounds of the report that he essentially doubled down on that conclusion? Am I right about that? That's absolutely right. When he was called in front of the Joint Committee of the Legislature, which has been investigating the COVID crisis, and he was asked about this um, by uh, by some of the legislators on the committee, he went beyond what he said in his report and said that Francisco Urania himself had turned down the National Guard request, that it had stopped with him. And that is flat wrong, according to um, Secretary Urania. He not only did not have the authority to do that, but he didn't, he didn't turn it down himself, and he told, he wouldn't have told Pearlstein that he did. Um, and and th that 
from, from our own reporting, that appears to be true. So it's unclear to me why Perlstein would say such a thing. I mean, it's one of the errors. There were a series of errors and, and omissions. And we were left thinking, well, why, why didn't you choose to investigate these things? Why didn't you look into the hiring? Why didn't you look into Mary Lou Sutter's involvement? Why didn't you look into what happened to the National Guard? And we simply don't know. And by the way, you know when, when people are wondering, Patty, if I can interrupt uh, watching this, well, why do two Globe uh, reporters have so few answers to these questions? You sought to interview people like Governor Baker and Mayor Lou Sutters. They would not agree to be interviewed. They agreed to respond to a limited number of questions you sent them. Is that is that correct, Patty? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think what we encountered in our effort to get full stories from uh, the governor and from Mary Lou Sutters are a refusal for a sit down interview. Um, and they would answer, we would give them a number of questions. We laid out exactly what was gonna be said in the story, anything negative. And we would just get, they would sort of cherry pick the things they chose yeah. to answer and deflect others. Um, one thing I will point out, you know, they also did not respond to, you know, some 10 public records requests. One specific request I think is interesting, which I would really like to see, and I don't know why it's not public, but the governor keeps talking about, I gave Mark Perlstein wide latitude to look into anything and everything. And we have asked for what is typically called a letter of engagement between Mark Perlstein and Governor Baker, right? Governor Baker chose him to engage in this Correct. independent investigation. What are the terms of this? Now, somehow, Mark Perlstein describes the contours of his of his investigation as more limited than you would think based on what Baker says. So I would love to see that letter. And that has not been something that has been produced to us. You know, by the way, this 100% latitude thing, for people who haven't been following this, since your report went online, uh, the governor's been asked one or two times by reporters what his response is. And he says things like Mark, Mark Perlstein had 100% a latitude. He said this on a number of occasions to go wherever he thought that report was going to take him. But your conclusion is Perlstein, if he was given 100 percent, chose to use only 50 or 60 percent or some <laughs> such thing. But again, you don't know what the contract was. Before you only go, only have a couple of seconds left. Is there a major takeaway, Rebecca, with you quickly, if you can, that I didn't touch upon that you hope readers go home with? You, you hit upon the main ones. He was a politically connected hire. He was protected from repercussions, even though they knew quite well what a terrible manager he was. And then in the wake of the crisis, um, they used the Pearlstein report, um, whose findings shielded them from blame. Patty, anything you want to add? I just think that one uh, takeaway from this is the role of, of patronage hires. Mm -hmm. And I think that people should realize that when you hire unqualified people due to political connections, particularly for a job uh, running a, a, a nursing home for veterans that are very vulnerable, it is a medical facility um, that you are leaving them very vulnerable to the kinds of tragic consequences we saw. Patricia Wen, Rebecca Ostreicher, great reporting and a great contribution to the debate. Thanks so much for being with me. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Thanks.